What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Cards here, bringing you some more Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2022. Second episode of 22, second stream in the last seven days. Uh, we're on fire here with our Dayton Flyers. So um, I'm excited to be back. Excited to be into the new version, getting this thing moving forward. Very unexcited about the new transfer portal. It obviously, uh, anybody that caught the last episode, it devastated my freshman recruiting class. I did at least notice, uh, I thought that it was all four of the freshmen that decided to transfer out. After I went off stream and for anybody paying any attention, obviously we were able to hold on to Isaiah Maxwell. Uh, so he was a freshman. He did stick around. He does have a little red frowny face at us, so... Uh, he seems all right, though. He wants solid minutes. I think he's going to probably get that this year. Looks like a solid player. Not spectacular. About what I would expect out of a two-and-a-half star type guy. Uh, obviously, gaping hole at the shooting guard position. Fernando Ward, our freshman from last year, transferred out. Didn't get the playing time he wanted. Now, we did have the huge recruit in Keith Walker. Uh, this dude's a freshman. He's spectacular. He's... He was ranked 23rd nationally, so bit of a danger to go pro early. I mean, the scoring's fantastic. The passing out of a small forward, good defender. He's just good across the board. Uh, of course, our best returning player is going to be Terrell Wise, also at the small forward position. So if this were a different year, different version, you know, we'd still have Fernando Ward, Keith Walker, we'd work him in, whatever. Given this new transfer portal and given everything that's going on with this game, I think what we're going to do is stick Keith Walker straight into that small forward position, give him all the minutes there. We're going to bump Terrell Wise, the senior, down to the shooting guard. If it pisses him off, what's he going to do? Graduate. So we're good there. Uh, we're relying on Fowler, the freshman, to be decent at point guard. I don't know about that. The really good news is, and now keep in mind it is still May 29th, and I actually expect this to tr to change drastically. But Ronnie Smiley looks like an absolute stud as of right now. Uh, ranked th 329th. I don't think that his camp performances were this good. I expect in the re-rate, uh, he's going to get popped. Uh, but anyway, it looks good for now. We do uh, have Andrew Wilson, the freshman, also looking like a three-and-a-half star type dude. This is about what I expected out of him. Would like the defense to pop up a little bit. So, assuming Smiley's going to get knocked back in that re-rate, if Wilson pops up a little bit defensively at the very least, uh, you know, that'll be workable. Keith Walker's going to be a superstar. Terrell Wise, the senior, you know, great defender. He's got the lockdown badge. He's got the cleanup badge. He's a heck of an outside shooter. Incredible rebounder from the three. We're going to be playing him at the two. Uh, so, hopefully he's athletic enough to keep up. That athleticism isn't spectacular, but... We'll see what we can do. And then Fowler, I think, will be our other starter. Not a good score. Sufficient defensively. Uh, I don't know what to say about this. Point guard is obviously going to be something that we're looking at. But now, uh, you know, we got to get into this, and we've got to get into this transfer portal, which is not something that I've ever done, not something that's ever interested me very much. But, you know, we're just going to be sort of forced into it uh, and that's the way that all of college basketball is going. So uh, I'm going to take a look at it. I can't promise you I'm going to do spectacular in this transfer period. Uh, I need to completely relearn like how to recruit out of this portal. I know a lot of people have been doing it for a long time. And maybe it's like keeping list of camp performers. Uh, like This guy doesn't do anything for me. He barely played, even as a sophomore at Utah State, this guy from New Mexico State is a senior, 28 minutes a game, uh, a D overall. I don't like that rating. Like, do I really want to bring this guy in as a senior who can attack zones and run a Princeton? I mean, he, he's, ratings-wise, he's a perfectly acceptable backup. I mean, Everybody that actually has interest in transferring here, they're all shooting guards. And that's probably just a product of me having one shooting guard on the roster and him being absolutely terrible. All right, so how do we go about recruiting these guys? Maybe we throw out some scout and contacts on these top tens because these top two are the top five interest guys. Uh, they don't interest me a ton. Maybe we 
Let's just see how this works. Let's scout and contact anybody that's got us in the top 10. And I don't know, maybe we need to be going after the low interest guys. Maybe that. And I actually don't know if this refreshes every week. So we're going to learn a lot about transfers here in about the first 10 minutes of the stream. Then we're going to jump into the recruiting, the good old traditional recruiting. We know how to get through that. Let's just see how this period goes. But guys, uh, for anybody that's joining in or watching later, this is the 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 Chris Appreciation Stream. Chris got a big. Chris, of course, runs GM Games. He's the dude behind all of GM Games. Everything. Uh, he's got a big life move tomorrow, so this is like his last night of normalcy. This is his appreciation stream. Uh, he's been running CBGM for at least a year, I think. Just incredible the most amazing multiplayer league i've ever been a part of online um he's i feel like he's done a lot for this game he's done a lot for some of the other uh, wolverine studios games you know just providing feedback and recommendations and that sort of thing i know he really uh gave a lot of ideas for the pro game uh and i think you know I, from what i've seen and what he's recommended it's been some cool ideas so um you know he's He's the, the reason that people are watching anybody that streams off of GM Games or watching later on YouTube. He gets it all going. He gets out gets the info out to the universe, to the Twitterverse, to whatever else. Uh, so big time Chris appreciation tonight. If you're from CBGM or anybody else coming over from GM Games, I uh, want to just give him a shout out. Thanks for everything that he does. Everything I'm sure he'll continue to do, even if there's a transition period. Uh, big shout out to Chris. He's amazing. Uh, really, really happy to uh, collaborate with him on some stuff. So, uh, back to this. Let's see what what week one of transfers did. Ooh, a lot of transfers in week one. I didn't have any offers out, and all these dudes are already gone. So, probably not great. But let's see what our actual list looks like. Okay, so Scout and Contacts is going to refresh every week. This who's transferring out of Louisville. Sophomore, 12 minutes a game. Not great. So we got no interest now. So anybody that had any interest in us whatsoever, they all left. Let's check out this Louisville dude. Mac Gibson. It's a sophomore, decent GPA, no scouting info on the guy. Looks like a lower-ranked recruit. Like, I just don't know, like, how do you evaluate this guy? I don't know. The best ideas that I do have to evaluate is to try to jump in and see if we can get, like, we can see this kind of stuff. All right, here we go. Now, he might have had a really bad ranking, but he's a player of the year, first team all conference in the WAC. So that's an interesting guy, Rick McDade. A good score. Decent rebounder. And he's got a lot of top choices that are pretty bad. But you know what? Let's make this one of our first guys. We're going to scout contact him. We're going to go ahead and offer him. Just, I mean, you see player of the year in a conference. The dude's got to be good regardless of where he goes, at least as a backup, right? Uh, so let's just bounce through a few of the other ones. Anything interesting? Patriot League all-conference first team? I don't know. Don't know about you, Mr. Houston. Plus, our our power forward that was a freshman last year is the one that stayed with us. I'd really like a point guard, to be honest, if we could grab one. I mean, a shooting guard as well. We're obviously not that deep there. Let's see what this got a Northwestern. We got anything going on here? Nope, not really. Uh, I like to look for guys that, like, have decent stats with bad minutes per game, like not playing a lot and still producing. All right, something like that, you're getting a minute where well, that's – one minute, I feel like, is not necessarily statistically relevant. Let's see if we can scroll down a bit. We got some big scores in here. Norris out of Massachusetts. He's a senior. Here we got a junior from San Jose as a power forward. If we can get one of these guys, here's what we're going to do. We're going to scout by assist per game because I want a point guard. Then we're going to see if anybody stands out, getting a lot of assists and not a lot of minutes. And I don't see any standouts. This right here might actually be the closest assist-wise. He doesn't look great scoring. He's a senior. Don't know about that. 
6.8. Some of these guys have, uh, let's see, Prairie View with a 3.1. What's this dude look like? Let's see if we can identify like an all-conference player. Something going on in this range while it's rated off of assists. And if we don't, I'm just going to roll right past this right into traditional recruiting and just try to do better at keeping guys around. Now, here we go. Corey Harmon ranked 34th nationally. Those ratings look god-awful. Huge potential. Ranked 34th nationally. So maybe a guy like this, he's an outside shooter, Corey Harmon. You know, maybe with he's got the passing and handling. If we could work on the defense and scoring, maybe he can develop with the rating that he's got, with the star rating up here. None of this particularly interests me. Uh, but it doesn't look like he got any playing time. Oh, but he's not going to develop. He's a senior. This dude's a senior. He's not going to develop. So, never mind. Pop that bubble real quick. Who else do we have? Tucker? No, 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 no. John Armstrong? I don't see a whole lot of interesting players in this portal at all. Like, to make up for what we lost, I don't know how I can go through these guys that never played and find the good ones, right? All right, here's the top 100 guy. He's a junior, Jason Ellis. It's a point guard, good assist per game, transferring out of Syracuse. We'll contact him, offer him a scholarship. If we can grab him as a transfer, cool. Or if we can grab the center that we offered, that's also cool. Uh, if we don't get either of those, I've already lost my patience with the transfers in this period. We'll just try to do better with traditional recruiting. Uh, I mean, we're, you're going to have to go after transfers in this year's version if you have on the current transfer portal, period. You just have to. I feel like, oh, there it is, Rick McDade. This is the one that we just brought in, right? All right so that's actually really good inside shooting. Uh, scoring's pretty average. The defense is bad. But, I mean, it's better than having a giant empty hole on the roster, right? Times the amount of Uno reverse. Are you playing Uno over there, Breeze? We, all right, we got Rick McDade. That's nice. Let's see if we grabbed... Oh, no. Was Jason Ellis? Was that the guard we were going after? I think that it was. It was. We did not get him, but we got McDade. We're going to call that a win. And we're also going to call that the end of our transfer session because that was brutally awful uh, for me, personally. I'll learn to love it. I'll adjust. You know, we're go we're all gonna have to adjust. If we're college basketball fans, that's the way the entire sport's going. I'm just not there yet. <laughs> I'll get there. I'll work on it. Oh, gotcha. Sorry, Breeze. I missed out on that one. Hey, Breeze. Uh, make sure to throw it out. This is. As I just mentioned, this is the Chris Appreciation Stream. Uh, so send out some kind words, well wishes, all that good stuff for Chris as he uh, takes off on a big uh, life journey tomorrow, I guess. I don't know. He's, he's switching hemispheres. Uh, he's just going to move across the globe. So best wishes to him, best travels, safe travels, all that good stuff. Uh, and we're just streaming tonight in his honor to thank him for everything that he does, you know. And to have a little bit of fun doing what we like to do, which is college basketball streaming with the Dayton Flyers. All right, get done with the transfers. I'm over it. My kid's screaming upstairs. I don't know if my mic's picking up any of that, but it sounds like somebody might have uh, attacked somebody else. I don't know really what happened up there. All right, so Smiley in the re-rate dropped back a little, right? Sorry, I'm very distracted by my kids' blood-curdling streams upstairs. Uh, Chris is just, Chris is moving. So, a uh, big life change for him. And uh, we wish him the best. You know, he'll keep on.
pushing everything along, but you, know, you don't always uh, you don't always get uh, opportunities to just say thanks to people uh, until something terrible happens, right? <laughs> but like nothing uh, nothing terrible's happening to him. He's just moving. But I thought it was a fun opportunity to just say thanks to somebody when you know they're they're doing something exciting for them in their life. So uh, best wishes to him, and he'll he's no change from him i think he's might have like limited ac- internet access for a few days but other than that he'll be fine it's just like a, a cool opportunity to say thanks wish him well wish him you know all the good stuff that he ought to have come in and tell him thanks for everything that he does for us summer travel who i wish i remembered which reports i pulled obviously we're going to indy elite we're obviously going to memphis i'm sure i probably grabbed that one in may oh 46k that's a limited we don't want to get crazy here don't have a huge budget no no no. i'm sorry i'm doing this like i'm at louisville uh we're in ohio i'm sure i pulled chicago we want to go to indy and we're gonna stick with that sorry i had a little brain freeze there and started thinking that i was at a different school in a different region pulling different reports very much not the case we're in dayton I'm sure I got the Ohio report. We'll go to Indy, see what we can get from there. And, uh, you know, better luck next time on me remembering it. Going into the transfer portal, normally I would have just started off on day one, but I wanted to see what was going to transfer and what was going to happen. So just a little bit of easing into the new version of the game, you know. Yeah, Breeze, if you want to see how the modern day transfer portal works, live on stream go back to my last stream after after this is over of course don't leave us now but go back to my last stream like my entire freshman class except one dude transferred out uh really kind of threw me for a loop so i don't know if that's going to be consistent or if that was a one-off type of situation all right so now we've definitely gotten past the re-rates because i know keith walker has dropped but he still looks excellent scoring excellent outside shooting defense all this is fantastic for a freshman he's a stud we're going to play Wise at the two. We're going to play Fowler at the point. And then it's going to be Wilson and Smiley. So we got one, two, three, four freshmen that are going to be starting. Uh, I would desperately like to replace Fowler, so I'll be looking for a high-end recruit there for certain. The rest of these dudes, hopefully Walker, Wilson, and Smiley, all three freshmen, all going to start. Hopefully they stick around and will really just be looking to reshape the backcourt. And it is interesting here. I think McDade, I think that if you do the modern day portal transfer, this guy, it looks like he's eligible, right? I think he's eligible immediately. So it looks like these transfers can be immediate impacts, which is interesting. Uh, And given that, we've got Wilson and Maxwell at the four, Smiley and McDade at the five. Those two positions, we look great. We've got depth. It looks like we've got some depth here, but playing wise out of position will mess with that. We do have Tyrone Austin, who is a decent recruit. Now you can see, like, you get a guy like this, it's not a bunch of ones and twos. To me, that's a decent recruit. Like, if you get a crappy recruit, it's all ones and twos. They're just putrid, right? This guy's got a lot of threes and fours. This is the type of guy who comes in as a freshman who can develop into something that by the by his junior or senior year, he can be a really good at least role player. Uh, on a really high level team so we do have some depth here but of course this is the kind of guy that i'm worried uh, in this new transfer portal is going to be leaving because he's not going to get the playing time that he wants Uh, or at least he's not necessarily you know he's not going to be the starter that's for certain mario q here i think oh i don't know might we play him over fowler I think so. He's got the offense down better. He's a better scorer. Let's take a look at the roster as a whole. Better scorer, better passer, better defensive rebounder. Fowler's a little bit better defender. Q's a better athlete, but Q's a senior. He's not going to develop, but he definitely knows the offenses. Yeah, I think we actually play Q. What's up, Blink? 
Yeah, the new transfer portal is crazy. It's a bloodbath in single player. It's definitely going to be a bloodbath in CBGM. Anybody watching the stream that's not in CBGM, I don't know what to tell you. Go find it. Uh, hit me up on Discord or whatever. I'll hook you up. Get your uh, behind into CBGM. It's amazing. Great, great multiplayer league. All right, so yeah, Q knows all the offenses. These two are fairly interchangeable. I'd love to not piss Fowler off and have him transfer out. He expects starters minutes. So that's sort of the question, right? Do we do we play this guy starters minutes and keep him around and hope that he develops over time and say that that's worth it? Or do we get one year out of Mario Q? You know what I think we do is I think we go through recruiting first. If we land a real stud point guard that can come in and play as a freshman next year then we go with Q if we strike out at the point guard position in recruiting then we need to keep Fowler around so somebody remind me when I get to that point when I'm setting up rosters before uh, whatchamacallit somebody remind me of that Let's see if we recognize any of the names getting drafted from North Carolina as uh, guys that we might have recruited if there are any I don't see any for a while so it might have been all the guys in North Carolina, Alex Collins, that was one of ours. So we got a second rounder there. Chris Medley, I believe, was one of ours as well. All right, so we grabbed, uh, we had a couple of guys that we recruited jumping up into the NBA draft. All right, let's get down to the recruiting that I actually know how to do. So we got five scholarships and... With this, anybody could transfer. I'm just playing it like that. Ideally, we like to get a point guard and everything else. Just let it hang tight. Uh, actually, a point and a shooting guard. We like both guard positions. That would be excellent. But as far as my strategy, I stick with what works. You know what I mean? Uh, we want to go overall rating. We're in the Midwest region. Full recruit list. This guy has no interest in a 1.8 GPA. That's a non-qualifier, folks. Not going after Mr. Watson. He'll probably end up all over the um, the camp, like top fives, MVPs, all that stuff. Uh, but I will let some of those uh, people in CBGM that like to s scout for the terrible GPA, like 880 SAT guys. Kevin Watson's all yours, boys. Have at him. Let the low GPA schools feed on Kevin Watson. That will not be me. Going, I'm still going to avoid the JUCO. A lot of guard interest. This is good. At shooting guard, I will take the JUCOs. Because we have absolutely no depth there. We desperately need players. We don't have 10 freshmen on the list, obviously. And uh, I would take two shooting guards. I would take a Juco and a freshman if I could get it. Small forward. We obviously have our starter. We're just looking for depth. So I'm not going to grab the Juco there. And you know what? I will throw a couple two-stars on the list and just see if we can grab one of them that maybe can be a depth guy for a couple of years, right? Uh, ooh, we got a couple of five-star power. Jonathan Crawford, the n number four recruit in the nation, has a little bit of interest in the Dayton Flyers. I took that drink to try to give myself time in my head to think whether or not we wanted to go after him, and I think that we do. You know, I don't think that the guy that we brought in is so good that we absolutely can't run him off. We grab a guy like that, well, that could be uh, program changing. So we'll bring him in. And at center, we've got our freshman that we're going to be playing. We just brought in our transfer, who's a junior. So, again, we're just looking for depth here. You know, every other year, uh, all the prior versions of this game I've talked about just bringing in talent. Bring in talent year over year. Stack your entire team with talent. And it, the strategy isn't necessarily going to change, but the mindset I think has to because now you're going to be bringing in talent every year thinking, like, what if I have to rely on these guys? What if everybody on my trans or everybody on my roster transfers out? Who can I play with next year? So 
you're still going to have to bring in talent year over year. Uh, you're, it's just going to be a strategic thing about like who you're keeping, who you're playing, that sort of thing. It's going to be more... I think that the transfer portal is more going to affect how I set rosters and how I set depth charts than anything else. I'm still targeting the same guys. I still want talented players. And, you know, we'll do the best that we can. So we got our list set up. Let's jump it over all positions. Start hosting these guys. Get moving through it. Wait a second. Nope. I don't want the full recruit list. Call and watch list only. Thank you very much. Host, 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 and move. Let's burn up through this recruiting. We got maybe we can get through this in 20, 25 minutes and jump into the season. I'm excited to see what these young guys can do. Got a team full of freshmen. We're going to need to set the strategy according to that. Uh, and we still need to go in and hit the depth chart. So don't let me forget, Breeze, Blink, anybody else that's in chat. Make sure to shout it out before we get there. All right. Get these camps out of the way. See how they go. Already got a point guard very interested in us here. Mr. Kelly Foreman out of Ohio. Nice to have the hometown boys. A little four-star point guard action here. Yeah. Interested in us, Xavier and Cincy. Didn't stand out at Indy. Not great. Who did stand out at Indy? Let's check it out. Can you say point guards? <laughs> And there's Kevin Watson out of Skokie, Illinois. I told you he was going to end up on all of these camp lists, but that's a total waste of a scholarship. So none of the other three point guard, none of the other five guys who were top five at Indy Elite are within our region. And we're still kind of trying to stay within our region at this point. All right, we're, gonna, we're just going to keep on moving on. We're going to ignore that. We're going to get through the Midwest camp. Then we're going to trim our list, and we'll go from there. Once we trim that list, uh, then you know we'll, we'll get our offers out. Start making some phone calls, get some interest generated, all that good stuff. No interest in that round of visits, which is frustrating. All right, so this is the Great Plains, and this is the Midwest camp. Cool visits, blah, blah, blah. All right, so let's check out Chicago. Once again, there's Kevin Watson, as I mentioned, all over the list. Don't care. So in our region, outside of him, it's all power forwards and a center, Nate Brown. How many of them are on our list? Nate Brown's on the list. Looking at these power forwards, I think Quadri Taylor is one. Who are the others? Recap. Miko Levis and Jonathan Crawford. Are they on our list? Levis and Crawford. Bum, bum, bum. There's Levis and there's Crawford. So, yeah, all these power forwards are on our list. Definitely between those three guys. Are, are one of those the five-star guy that we're after? Yeah, Jonathan Crawford. All right, so obviously this is a – Really strong player, top 25 at Indy, top five at Chicago, Jonathan Crawford, very solid, probably a one-and-done type of guy, but if we can get some interest there, uh, that's totally a guy that you bring in. He can be a program changer type. Uh, Levis is another five-star guy. Now, he could turn into a four-year player, so that's a really interesting one, and then Taylor is also four, four stars, top 50. So a great year to go out and grab a power forward for us if we can get one of them with some interest. All right. Oh, I started making visits. I don't want to do that right now. Didn't stand out. Decent at Chicago. So Kelly Foreman, even though he's very interested in us, I'm not that interested in him. TJ's good. Top 25. Decent. Decent. Egan's off the list. Oh, I think that's new. I think that's new in 22. It used to be if you remove somebody from a list on this, you had to like change the screens around, I think. I'm not 100% certain. McNeil is off the list. And Die is off the list. Okay. Yeah, I think that might be a, a change for 22. I don't think that happened in last year's version of the game. 
decent. Ugh. Didn't stand out. You're off the list. Evans, that's a Juco. That's a Juco. Juco. Lots of Juco's over here. All right, so the shooting guard, wow. We really need a shooting guard, and there's really not great options. We've either got Juco's or guys that were like, eh, okay at camp. So we'll work through that and see how it how it flushes out. See if we can get rid of any small forwards. Jerry, you didn't stand out at Chicago. You're gone. Jordan. Nope. Nope. Get out, Ishmael Hogan. No, these small forwards are terrible. What's wrong with the small forwards this year? Oh, it might it must be because we already got Keith Walker and we don't need small forwards. So if there's one position that I could care less if it's really shallow this year, small forward. All good small forwards. Suck as much as you want. We don't need you. Top five, top five, top five. He was decent. You suck. So do you. Flanagan's a top 25. You did not stand out. Neither did you get out Antonio Perry, and then we're back to the top. All right, centers, let's clear these out, and then we're zooming through the rest of recruiting. Decent. Didn't stand out. Wes Williamson. <sighs> Jim Tom, come on, Jim. Jim, couldn't do anything in Chicago. Jabari, nothing. You got nothing. Granger, I didn't see you at all. You didn't stand out. Oh, my gosh. The centers are atrocious. Thank goodness. And then there's Nate Brown in the top five. So this is one of those two-star guys, super-duper underrated. Uh, but Nate Brown, that's... That's probably going to be, let's go ahead and host him. And we'll host one of the top guys. We're going to scout Nate live. Then we'll jump out to all positions. We want to scout Jonathan Crawford live, and we'll go ahead for Levis. Levis, Lavas, I don't know how that goes. All right, so is this a dead period? Yes. Skip past that. Then we will jump straight into hosting a bunch of people, seeing who has interest, and trying to get some offers out right around like August 28th or uh, September 5th. Summer camp, but this is going to be uh, Memphis and Atlantic East. We didn't pull reports or visit those. Not interested. We still got $28,000. So that is something to keep an eye on. I don't want to be any lower than 12,000 when we hit in-home visits. Like you need at least 12,000 really to pull off a decent round of in-home visits. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. But we do have five scholarships, and I'm just spreading them out across positions. Because like I said, we have no idea who's going to be coming back next year. I don't know what I'm more excited about, to see if I can pull one of these really, really strong power forwards or to get into this next season with all these freshmen. They're both exciting. All right, not a ton of interest yet. We're going to get there, though. We got good assistants. We got a good head coach. Still in early August. These are going to start turning yellow and start turning orange. Not worried. Mm-hmm. Not worried in the least. Everybody on the first page has visited. Oh, we got a hot one down here, Nate Brown. Top five at Chicago. He's already hot on us. And that's the center. Ah, oh, shoot. I mean, I think we just go for it, right? Like, we're going, ugh. I wonder if we can bring him in and redshirt him. Because he'll probably be behind McDay. Yeah, let's just do it. And when we talk about bringing in talent... That's talent. He's into us. We're doing it. No reason not to. I'm top five in, in the region. You, That's great. 
I'm not going to ignore that. I don't care about the transfer portal. All right, we should have gotten re-ratings there, but I want to get one more week of visits in. Now let's see what we got. All right, well, this terrible point guard is still very interested in us. Let's see if we can just offer... Oh, God, he's the only point guard that has any interest in us whatsoever. He does have... Uh, you know, he's got some potential. But he was just decent at Chicago. Do we have anything better? Decent at Indy Top 25 at Chicago. So this guy's better. What about ones we have not talked to yet? Decent at Chicago, no. All right, so we would really like one of these guys, honestly. Griffin DeWitt. Let's see if any of them are just cool on everybody. Myers, no, not really. Foreman might be our only chance to land a point guard, and he's not going to be great. So that really strongly points me towards, uh, you know, hold on. So, I mean, ratings wise he looks good stats wise he looks all right let's go for him let's go ahead and offer foreman uh but we're not going to count on him too much we're going to go ahead and start donald fowler this year and try to invest in him and keep him around all right so we do have interest from one high school shooting guard who was top 25 at chicago uh, we're number one on his list right now that's definitely an offer let's text and open up these categories and then let's jump back over make sure we've got foreman opened up we do not bum, bum, bum. chat about things how do you like us we're on the list good to hear cool so maybe those can be our two guards we'll see reese decent not spectacular all three of the small forwards are pretty much the same, but we're hot on this one. Why do we only have two scholarships left? Because we already offered a center. That's right. Uh, so Reese is totally a depth kind of move, so I'm good with that. And at power forward, what are we looking like? Oh, we got some hot interest down here. He was only decent. I would really like... All right, so Levis was top 10 at Indy. That's great. Taylor was also top 10 at Indy, and we're in this list of, ooh, I think we might have a better chance at him. Crawford's still cool. He's hot and warm on a lot of others. We don't have a chance at Crawford. Levis and Taylor, we might have a shot. But, but Levis has got five schools that he's hot on. Dayton is not in his top 10. Quadri Taylor, on the other hand, we're at least in his top 10. He's only hot on Duke. That's going to be our uh, Hail Mary, Quadri Taylor. Let's advance this so we get some call minutes back, open up the, the categories on Taylor, and see if we can bring him in. Once again, anybody that didn't catch it earlier, this is the Chris Appreciation episode. So if you're coming in from CBGM, if you're coming in from anywhere else that knows what Chris is about from GM Games, uh, he's got big life changes coming up tomorrow, big move for him. Uh, make sure to shout out, wish him luck in chat, uh, wish him well in chat, his new endeavors, all that good stuff. He'll still be with GM Games, obviously, he runs the entire thing. Uh, he's just going to be offline for a couple of days while he moves around, but um, you know he's doing great, it's not like he's disappearing or anything just a chance to say thank you to somebody uh, who's done a lot for this community so thank you chris and if you're in chat make sure to tell chris thank you wish him best of luck it's what it's all about tonight it's why we're streaming uh dun, dun, dun. we want to make sure all these categories are unlocked Everybody that we've offered, still in his top 10. Just making sure these do change week by week once you hit that um, August 21st, I think it is.
I always like to ask about the parents just because I feel like if you were a real recruit, you'd want to know what the parents were saying. So, all right, we got that out of the way. We do still need to host these dudes. All right, headed into home visits here, baby. Let's get it going. See who's coming to Dayton next year, and then let's get into it. Kelly Foreman headed to X. Uh, have fun there. Good, best of luck to you guys. Quadri Taylor. All right, so he's also hot on Notre Dame. Dayton, not quite in the top ten anymore, but let's see if we can jump back up into it. Ooh, facilities. He's into facilities. Can I mean, we're going to pitch it. I'm a big believer in pitching whatever they're interested in, whether I can compete with it or not. Uh, it's my way of telling them I know what they're interested in, and I'm going for it. So our other two are going to be, we want to visit the point guard and Nate Brown. He likes facilities also? Yikes. All right, hopefully that works out for us. Oh, was Foreman our offer? Was Foreman our point guard offer? He was. Yikes. Whoops. All right, so that didn't work out. And Adonis Myers is bad, right? Decent, not great. Are any of these other guys... They're all very into other schools. Maybe we could get Justin Bennett, but he didn't stand out. He was decent, not spectacular. Top, Brandon was top 10. Can we get Brandon Steele? I don't know. I mean, he's a three-star guy. I don't know if anybody's going to be offering him. Maybe we can pull something off here. This looks like the best available. And if we don't get him, we'll jump down to the lower rated dude. Visit him and talk about location. All right, let's see what happens. We're going to delete all these old emails. Can't stand having 29 emails in my box. All right, we got two decisions early. Nate Brown, I feel good about. Got it. Quadri Taylor, this would be a big time power forward recruit. All right, so we nailed it on the big man recruiting. Unfortunately, that's where we're already deep. We need some guards. Brandon Steele can't see playing for us. Whatever, dude. All right, let's see what we can do with these guards. I don't think any of the other point guards are very... Oh, Griffin is actually okay. All right, Brandon Steele, still cool. Didn't like our visit, so we're going to revoke that one. Hmm. Would DeWitt be top 25 of Chicago, decent at Indy? Yeah, I mean, let's see if we can grab this dude. That would be a good one. Desmond Dahl, we're hot. We're top on his list, so let's stick with what works. Kenny Reese. Stick with what works. We're number one on his list. We ought to get both of those guys. And so it's really just going to be down to a point guard. And we'll go ahead and visit Adonis Myers. Talk about that location. He'll be our backup option if we don't get anything here. And move on from there. Yeah, Chuck, what's up, buddy? Glad to have you. Uh, there is going to be an extra streamer beverage just for Chris this evening. We're going to pour one out, I believe. Like, I haven't seen him in chat yet. We've been shouting him out the whole time, so this is just to say nice things to him so that when he comes back and watches the stream after the fact, he sees all the nice things that we say. But I'm pretty sure he's out with his boys right now doing the, the last hurrah in his hometown before he uh, bails out tomorrow for greener pastures. Uh, this, as usual, I don't really care about my schedule. I'm trying to build a national championship team here. If you're going for the national championship, baby, you don't care who you play. Bring on the best of the best. We did get one more recruit in Kenny Reese. You can see it right here. Looks like we're going to lose one. That's right, Griffin DeWitt going to Marquette. 
All right, so we tried to grab a decent ish point guard. It did not at all work out. Don't think this guy, he was decent, so really no better than Adonis Myers. We're going to bring in Myers, hope that he can be a depth type of option. Uh, we can we can visit Bennett. At shooting guard. Come on and commit already. Alvin Smith were warm on him. He wasn't great. And then we do have the Juco Ray Levis. So two Levis guys in one year. Hard working kid. Good score from the shooting guard position. Yeah, maybe we uh, maybe we make a visit here. If something crazy happens with Dahl, then maybe we jump on this Juco. You never know. Stranger things have happened. We're still working through this new new version of the game. You know, new transfer portal, new roster building situation going on. So we'll see what happens. I am kind of low-key, very low-key, kind of low-key hyped about the fact that it looks like transfers are eligible immediately, which I do think tracks well with the new transfer portal. Um... But we'll have to see. We brought in McDade. I think he's eligible straight away. We'll find out. And if he is, that's cool. All right, so Myers is coming in. And that was that point guard. So it's still just Desmond Dahl that hasn't recruited or hasn't committed. Is that the only one? We got our two inside guys, our point guard. We just need our shooting guard. And obviously Taylor's the cream of the crop here. But Nate Brown was also top five. Uh, regionally Adonis Myers was decent regionally we're just looking for him to be a backup to Fowler and Kenny Reese obviously nobody's going to be jumping over Walker anytime soon so we're just looking for depth there as well uh, we need to see what's happening at this shooting guard position Desmond Dahl and he was top 25 in Chicago we're still hot the, the offer is out there why won't you commit go to your home Desmond uh, Demond, sorry, not Desmond. Demond Dog, go to your home, Cleveland, Ohio. Hey, Dayton's not that far away, dude. Come on down, be a shooter for us. Look at that outside shooting. You know the defense looks solid. The ball handling for a two guard. Come on, Dog. Don't mess around. Uh, don't play with our hearts here. We'll hold on to Ray. Might even hold on to this other. Got a couple other JUCOs. Want to shout out to this one. Just pitch them on location. Just a backup option because Demond's being a real uh, difficult. You know he's playing hard to get. That's for certain. Let's take a look at our strategy here. We are playing a lot of freshmen this year, so we're heavy triangle in motion. Motion and triangle. Our seniors are significantly better at triangle, which will help Terrell Wise. Maxwell a little bit, but nobody else that we're actually playing is going to benefit that much from it. So this is a great opportunity to switch this over to 50-50. We're going to cut way down on this usage, though. We're going to go down to actually, since we're going to start, we're starting Fowler, Wise, Walker, who are bringing in a crazy good power forward. So what do we do here? I'll have to think about the power forward position. And then Smiley at the center. So, like, 55, I'm fine with that for this year. Defensively, we're mostly running a 2-3 zone. So that's cool. Let's check out our practice plan, get that squared away. Hey, that's probably why he hasn't committed, because I keep on calling him Desmond. You know, you walk into the house, some goofy-looking dude like me, like, hey, Desmond, what's up? It's like, I'm not, not coming to this dude. You for real? So... Maybe if I call him Damon and, and, you know, just uh, thoroughly, thoroughly apologize, maybe he'll reconsider. Especially since it seems like we're the only one that's really hard on him. Uh, but you never know. Oh, we got an assistant coach in the background. What's up, James? I do not have any scissors down here. Thank you for asking. Assistant coach, uh, my boy over there, dropping marbles, it sounds like. I don't know what he's doing. He dropped a marble. Perfect. 
uh, okay, we got the practice set up. We got the strategy set up. We need to get our depth chart corrected because we wanted to get Fowler in instead of Q just because of the offenses we're going to be running. Like Running Q probably increases our chance of winning this year, but I don't know that our chances of winning this year are all that great anyway. So we are going to go for the lineup that is most likely, in my opinion, to set us up for long-term success, which looks something like this. And we get Maxwell up here. He's a solid player. Definitely want McDade up here. These two guys are going to be our inside guys. Can Maxwell go down to the three? He's an outside shooter. Six, seven outside shooter. He's athletic. Yes, Maxwell's going to play some three for us. So, McDade, Maxwell, and then guard-wise, what do we want? We definitely want Q up here. And Walton or Austin. Let's get Austin up here. Let's have the AI suggest a matrix, and I really like what it does. This is what I was going to do, get Maxwell in there. Some minutes at the three, some minutes at the four. McDade. Cue some heavy action. Austin plays a little bit. I was not expecting Tucker to play. Yeah, we can rework this a little bit. So what we're going to do is... Dun, dun, dun. We're going to do this like these uh, eight-minute segments that I like to do. Small forward, small forward. I like that much better. All right, that's what we're going to stick with then. Did we already schedule our visits? Yes, we certainly did. All right, cool. We're going to let this roll. Hopefully we pick up Damon, Damon Dahl. Uh, if we don't, we'll go after one of the JUCOs. But we've got our roster set up. we got our strategy set up. It's time to roll, baby. Get these Dayton Flyers off the mark. All right, nothing yet. We're in the running. We're through the in-home visits. We can take one more look just to see where we're at. Damon, yeah, he's still only hot on us. Like, he's going to commit, right? All right, but we're good to go. Ready to get into this season, baby. I think we got a chance. I, I'm a little bit worried about the point guard spot. Like I said, I think Q would have given us a better chance to win this year. Um, but we're looking long term. Here's Demond. There we go. We got the name right. He finally decided. Like, I think we kept on sending offers to Desmond Dahl, and he kept on agreeing to play for like Dateman or something like the Dateman Floors. And he was sending his acceptance letters to, to you know, Dartmouth or you know, Dortmund. Maybe it was Dortmund. Uh, but we finally, we got the DeMond thing right. He got the Dayton thing right. He's good, signed, sealed, delivered. He's ours. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Year, this is year three? I think it's only year two that I've streamed, but this is year three with Dayton. And normally this would be the, like, turn the corner year. But with all the guys that transferred out last year, uh, this is a brand new experience. We're going to see how it goes playing these guys super early. Uh, play into the long-term future of the team. And we will play it out until we see who transfers out again next year. So, you know, it's kind of frustrating. I'd like to see who transfers out, but then I'd also like to be able to do my – uh, reports and summer plans in the same stream. So I'll have to think about how to do that going forward. Tonight we're going to try to get to, tonight we're going to try to get to uh, to to see who transfers out. Yeah, his mom got over it. Put some respect on that name. Damon da from three. We do the big old announce, like have our PA guy come in and make sure he really pronounces like Come on, da. He's gonna be the man. I right, do. We want to make any red shirts. I would normally completely ignore this, but given the changes, it's something I gotta 
think about it, at the very least. Uh, dun, 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 dun. No, I don't. All good. No red shirts. Thank you for asking. But we're, we're good. Man, I'm really worried we should start Mario Q instead. He's a better scorer, better passer, better, uh, not a better defender. That's the only thing that is keeping me with Fowler is that he's a better defender and he can develop, whereas Q is a senior and we're the point guard we're bringing in I don't think is going to be crazy good. All right, so let's see how it goes, you know. The Minnesota Golden Gophers, home of uh, Ricky P. Jr. Hmm. Old Richard tried to coach there for a while. Didn't work out. Tubby Smith tried it. it. Seems like it's just really tough to coach basketball at Minnesota. Let's show them how it's done, Dayton. Mm, whoa, we held them to 37? Yikes. Whole lot of new guys there showing up. I, think, I know it was McDade and Walker, and I don't know if the other one was Wise or Fowler. But uh, Minnesota couldn't break 40. So I don't know if that speaks more to us or to them. And now we're playing on the road against the number two North Carolina Tar Heels. Let's see how legit this preseason ranking is. Hopefully, oh, this is a neutral court game. This is a tournament game. So uh, non-conference tournaments here. And we're playing North Carolina. I was wondering, I didn't... Think that I saw a number two team in the country in that uh, schedule preseason. So glad I'm not crazy. This is part of a tournament. Let's see what happens here. Let's see if we can if we can just play within ten on a neutral court. We're at least headed in the right direction. Just avoid a blowout, please, please. Oh my word! That is as close as it gets against the number two team in the country on a neutral court. Mm, I've got to think we played well, but it could bode very well for where we're headed as a team. Oh, we're taking these flyers, baby. We're going to be competing for Final Fours and National Championships within the next two years. Give me two years. Hopefully, we'll get that far within the next month of streaming. We'll have Dayton competing for some real-ish out there. Let's get it, boys. Oh my God, we still got people down here. We got a, one of my dogs down here. Sniffing around, trying to get into something bad. You know, the assistant coach let him in. I would have barred him at the door, but that didn't work out. <clears throat> Man, one point lost to North Carolina. That's brutal. That would have been, that would have been so hyped. Might have bounced off the roof for that one. All right, we got some email. What's going on out here? Letters of intent from Taylor, Dahl, Myers, and Reese. So we are missing one from uh, the center, that two-star center. Although, again, guys, this year they've changed that. So if if someone signs the LOI, I'm still relatively certain that they're guaranteed to qualify. If they don't sign the LOI, it's no longer doomsday. So I'm pretty sure we're all right. We will go check. So Nate Brown had a 2.8 high school GPA. He should be fine. He's the one that did not sign. But we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to assume he's going to show up on campus. Ooh, Gonzaga putting it on somebody. 30-point win there. So now we got Delaware State coming in. What are they, the Hornets? The Murder Hornets? Looks like something that would sting. All right, they're just the regular Hornets. I feel like they should maybe put, like, now that I know more murder Hornets are a thing, maybe if you're just the regular Hornets, you should state your regular Hornets. But uh, not murder Hornets, regular ones coming in. Hornets and Flyers in Dayton. And whew, uh, we maybe they did murder us. I don't know. That's... Like, how do you go from, on a neutral court, number two North Carolina, lose by a point, Delaware State, not murder hornets, at home, 
and you lose. How does that happen? I don't – come on, guys, a little consistency. Maybe that's the inconsistency of freshmen that we're seeing the right there. I need – I'm going to get right now Chris's official uh, celebration, appreciation, streamer beverage. All right, this one's for Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for the CBGM. Thanks for uh, always promoting my streams and putting me out there and uh, all the, you know, fun I get to have with people chatting and watching and commenting and all that stuff is all because of what you do. So thanks, buddy. Everybody else, get your shout outs in now. All right, can we get back on track on the road against Tulsa? Still, my dog distract me in the background. Dayton and Tulsa. Can we pull it out? All right, so obviously looking like these freshmen might be back and forth all year. Little bit. Uh, you know, what might help is once we get through uh, like January, February, start getting into the conference tournament time. Once I got a little bit more experience, maybe we can up the percentage of the offense that they run and I feel like maybe that'll level out the consistency to some degree still going to be very tough with the freshman point guard maybe we switch Q over to the starting point guard at the end of the year and Fowler will have enough minutes to to be happy and not transfer out we'll have to see we'll keep it in mind oh Florida that's not looking good for Florida really falling off. Florida is a if anybody is uh, new to the game, hasn't played a whole lot like Florida is a super fun team to take over and you can just start dominating with them like crazy build your own little dynasty down there, you know, Billy Donovan started it off, you can take it to the next level if you want. Uh, so let's see what happens at Clemson, they're undefeated so far and they're going to stay that way very much so very much so. Our freshmen could not get it done on the road. So we'll have to keep an eye out. Once we get through December, once we uh, just about get into conference play, we'll take a look and see, you know, just stats-wise, how our teams are performing, what's going on, if there's any changes we can make to nudge them in the right direction, right? I mean, some of this is, I guess, just, I don't know. I think it's freshman inconsistency. We lost so many of those recruits from the first year. But, you know, uh, everybody's going to have to deal with that in this year's version of the game. So it's a learning curve for everybody. Let's see if we can get over the curve, get over the hump, and beat out the Bucknell Bison. I don't think that's a good team. Hopefully we are a good team that's just come into some rough games early and we take care of Bucknell. Let's get it, boys. Let's go. That's right. 20 points. Keith Walker. That's a – okay. I was about to say that's an all-freshman team right there. It was Walker, McDade, and Smiley. So McDade is the transfer. He is very much playing. So that's the cool thing about the new transfer portal. All right. So we learn as we go. But obviously, these are all new guys. Like, none of the guys that were on Dayton when I arrived here as coach are contributing anything at all to this team. This is all guys that we've brought in. Those three are actually, even though they're not all freshmen, they are all guys that we just brought in this year. So, they're all first-year players here in Dayton. Uh, so, you know, if you've got all first-year players, you're going to go through some struggles. And we didn't necessarily prepare for it last year. We didn't know what we were walking into. We're figuring it out as we go. We'll get better as we go. But now we got to go into pit, and this might be another, uh, you know, this is a difficult thing. You, you don't just go into ACC arenas and win games, especially not pit. And it shows right there. We made a valiant effort, especially Mr. Keith Walker, and that dude's going to be an absolute stud. Keith Walker, by the time he leaves here, is going to be one of the best players in Dayton Flyer history. I guarantee it. Guarantee it. He's playing every game. He's our starter until he graduates. 
He's not going anywhere. And uh, he'll be an absolute legend by the time he leaves, as long as he doesn't transfer. But couldn't get it done there on the road against Pitt. So, all right, Portland at home. This is one we need to win. You can't lose games against bad, bad, bad teams, and that's exactly what the Portland Pilots are this year. They're bad. So let's get back to 500. Oh, way closer than it should have been. Just terrifying. As as exciting as it was to play North Carolina to one point on a neutral court, it was exactly that terrifying to play that awful team at home and only win by three. Freshman inconsistency. Learn to love it, guys. Or at the very least, learn to avoid it. Which would be my recommendation. Uh, so, everybody in the stream, just learn from my mistakes. Avoid them in your personal saves. And this will be very beneficial for you. Now we're coming home. Still playing against Charleston. Doesn't look like a great team. 4-3 and three on the year. 2-2 two and two in their conference. How are they... That, that said 2-2 two and two in conference, right? It's December 12th. Who's playing conference games? Did I read that wrong? Oh, yeah, yeah, 2-2 two two away. Sorry. I thought that was 2-2 two two in conference. I'm like, what are y'all doing? Who starts conference play in November? 2-2 two two away, Charleston, Dayton. Oh, the net averages are pretty close. Let's hope our freshmen show up tonight. Take care of this Charleston team, please. Yes. Rick McDade, it's not even the freshman, it's McDade. McDade doing big things. We need, when we get to the end of December, I need to check this out and see if McDade uh, might need to slide in front of Smiley. Now, I don't want Smiley to transfer, so that's obvious. Oh, Scott Davenport. Let's hear it for Scott Davenport. Scotty Davenport, the Bellarmine Knights real-life head coach, longtime Louisville assistant under Denny Crum. Uh, he was a potential guy to take over the real-life Louisville coaching job. But instead, we hired the man, Kenny Payne. Uh, but, yeah, Scott Davenport, that's cool. Uh, but, yes, we need to keep an eye on the McDade-Smiley competition and see if we can, if there's any room to make changes there, if we need to consider anything, headed into Auburn. Now, sooner or later, this, this team full of potential has to jump up and grab one, right? I mean, they, they almost got it against North Carolina. They fell disastrously short a handful of other times. Can they grab one against Auburn? Keith Walker, Smiley, and I didn't see the third player there. But they're doing it, baby. They jumped up on the road. Took down a SEC foe. Feels good. Feels good. Six and four on the year. Not yet into conference play. Approaching the end of 20, what are we in? 2043, my word, we've been streaming for a long time. 2043, goodness gracious. <clears throat> I do want to get all the way through December so that our stats and everything are statistically relevant before I look at making changes to the roster, to the depth chart. It's just nonstop distractions tonight. That usually doesn't happen, I apologize. Number 23. Oh, all right. Kentucky's trying to do something. I see you. I see you, Kentucky. Got Loyola Marymount coming up. Coming into Dayton, the Flyers Arena. Looks like the big V. I think I was talking in the last stream about how I've been in the Dayton Arena a handful of times, and it just, it does. It looks like a big, not, I don't guess a V, more like a, whew. I don't like a tired V. You know what I mean? Like a, you know how uh, like grade schoolers draw a picture of a bird like that. How it's just kind of like, that's what their entire arena looks like. You ought to check it out sometime. You can sit way up in the top and it's just like scrunched up. Loyola Marymount coming into the Dayton Flyers home turf, and they get sent packing by Terrell Wise, Keith Walker, and Ronnie Smiley. Mmm. Feeling good. That's right. A couple of real scary games early in the season. But 
a big win over Auburn, a very fun win over Loyola Marymount, and now we look sort of like I was hoping, expecting, that sort of thing. Sharpie. <laughs> Sharpie says he's flying away. I, I don't know if it was Sharpie. Was that Sharpie 58 or is that Frank Sinatra? I think we we might have Sinatra in chat, guys. Everybody, if you're not looking, double check. Sinatra might be in chat. We're being visited. Um, it, it does say 58. Is that a sign? Might be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but Sharpie, uh, yeah, I love streaming, buddy, and I love interacting with people in the stream, in the chat. Uh, but this stream is for Chris. Uh, Chris from GM Games, he's got a big life change going tomorrow. He's moving across hemispheres all the way across the all the way across the globe. So if you want to send out thanks or send out appreciation or anything like that, tonight's for Chris. So send all good feelings and appreciation and thank yous his way. He's the reason that this Twitch channel exists. He's the reason that the YouTube exists. He's the reason that you've ever watched me. Um so, I mean, I streamed personally for years before I ever met with Chris, and nobody watched me at all. So, the fact that you all are even here tonight is only because of Chris. So, big shout out to him. Big thanks to him. Uh, this is his night. Uh, so, make sure to say nice things to Chris in chat. He's not here right now, but he's going to watch it after the fact. I'm going to make him. This is going to be his uh, what he watches as he, like, flies across the world or whatever uh it might be changing planets i'm not certain exactly it's just gonna be like really far away headed to arizona state interesting so we actually look decent they're five and five five and four at home that doesn't look great we might have a chance here oh Smiley with the double-double. Walker had a big game. It looked like Wise had a big game, and we just fell short. Could not get over that hump. So close. All right. All right, press on, guys. Press on. We're still learning. This is an entirely new environment with this transfer portal. Entirely new environment. Trying to build up a new team. And I think we're looking pretty decent. Like, as of right now, I think this is like a second round, maybe, maybe if they play it right, Sweet 16 type of team. I think we're a tournament team for sure. Once we get into conference play, I think we go like, uh, I can't remember if this is a 16 or 18 team conference, but I think we're like a, at least 9 and 7, if not like a 10 and 6 team in conference. But these next couple of games are actually going to tell us a lot. We, we're home against an awful 3-8 and eight Fordham team at the Richmond Spiders, who are 6-6, six and six, St. Bonnie 6-5 six and five at home. Out of those three games, realistically, we should win all three of them. If we go two out of three, we'll be on track, but it'll be concerning. I'm looking for three for three here. And keep in mind, we always have the the trump card of putting uh, Mario Q in as our starting point guard, who knows all the offenses. We can put in Mario Q, bump the percentage of offensive set plays up to like 60, 65. 65 is probably as high as I'd go with this team. Um, but we have that, like we know that's an injection of, percentage of chance to win for this team right uh, so we do have that available let's take a look real quick at our roster nope stats that's what we're looking for all right so so q and fowler are pretty much playing even minutes fowler's actually scoring a lot more Turnovers are similar. Assists are similar. Hmm. 
Mario Q's not hitting threes whatsoever. All right, so I take it back. I don't know that Fowler would, or I don't know that putting in Q would do anything significant based on that. Smiley and McDade are both. Uh, McDade is scoring 13 points a game, and he's only playing 15 minutes a game. Wise and Walker both in double figures. Wilson's a really good rebounder. All right, so let's see. Is there an opportunity to put Smiley and McDade on the court at the same time, or do we stick with what we've got? McDade's a nice score, but he does not have enough defense. No, I, I like what we've got. Still struggling with the point guard thoughts, but I like what we've got. Let's roll on with it and see how it works. If at the end of January it's not going well, we'll uh, throw up a Hail Mary. So Fordham, the Rams, 3-8. and eight. They think they're coming into University of Dayton Arena to do anything other than get sent home. They're getting sent home. Get out. You're not welcome in Ohio. Go away. Go away. Terrell Wise, Mario Q, Keith Walker. Go away. Get out of Ohio, Fordham. Rams are not welcome. Absolutely not. Out of here. Get out of our flyaway arena. We're going to get some Sinatra playing on the stream before long, thanks to Sharpie. All blue eyes. <clears throat> uh oh, it's Jerry Shot. Oh, kids are going insane again, but this one sounds more friendly, so not going to be terrified by that. Uh, we are moving into January. We've got the Richmond Spiders on the road. We need some road wins, so this is going to be the difference. Like, I hope that this can develop into a Sweet 16 team, right? But it's just going to be about how quickly they develop. Uh, games like this are ones where they could prove that they're something, this is a 50-50 type game, though. It's probably going to be close. Probably a close loss. 10-point loss. So a little bit worse than I thought, actually. That's all right. They're still getting better. We're still working on this. We'll, we'll improve as the season goes. Sharpie says that Sinatra sings about New York, and so that means I'm going to the NIT. And I do not know if I can agree with that logic. I don't think we're going to the NIT. I don't see it. I think we're going to make some stuff happen here. Let's see what the emails look like. I think in conference, I'll have to look. I'll have to look and see who the higher rated teams are. I think in conference, we can pretty much, hopefully, hold our own at home and steal two or three on the road. And that's all that we need to do. Now, if we start losing, like if we lose this game at home, you know what, I'll, you, you might be right, Sharpie. But if we win this, which we did in convincing fa- Oh, Andrew Wilson suffered an injury. Okay. That was convincing fashion, but we got an injury. Let's check the injury. Sore shoulder. He's fine. 
All right, so that was convincing fashion. We keep doing that at home and win two or three road games. And we're going to the NCAA. And I think we're, uh, like I said earlier, I think we're a team that can go second round and maybe jump up and, you know, uh, punch above our weight level a little bit and maybe compete for the Sweet 16. We got some talent. Yeah, no jinxes. We're not messing with jinxes tonight. That's absolutely correct. Now we're headed on the road to George Washington. Uh, It's a game I expect to lose, but I hope to win, like I said, two or three of these throughout the year. We're capable of it, very capable of it. I, I still, regardless of the stats, I still think it would be helpful to move Q into that starting point guard position. Uh, and bump up the um, the offensive strategy, the offensive set percentage. But we're letting Fowler play it out right now in the hopes that we build this team for the future. We're not winning the national championship this year. That's clear. We're not that type of team. So that's the we're we're building for the future. Uh, but let's see what happens here. Oh, yes, we won. Fowler showed up big with 12 points. Wilson, even though he was injured, went for 7.6 rebounds. And we got a nice road win there. So that's what I'm talking about. We just need a handful of those road wins, like two more. Two more of those road wins and hold serve at home. All right, keep fighting for it, boys. Keep fighting. You got it. You got it. We got LaSalle coming up. We're going to take care of business. We're getting on a roll now. We got LaSalle coming up at St. Joe's and then Davidson, the home of Steph Curry, right? Let's get it. Let's get it. What's LaSalle got? You're not messing with us in in the U, the U of Dayton. I don't know what we're going to call it. We got to come up with something for the for the University of Dayton Arena. University of Dayton Arena. Uh, I don't know what it looks like. 747? I don't know. I mean, they are the Flyers. Versus the Explorers, though. Ooh, is that a counter? It's like a Civ 5 counter, right? Or Civ 6 now? I don't know. I'm old. A lot of Civ games. Ooh! LaSalle don't know nothing about Civ, though. They just got beat by 30. They got smoked. LaSalle, you're not welcome in Ohio. You can go right back to LaSalle. Get out of our u-shaped arena you know we got here's the thing university of dayton arena it's pretty big down at the bottom got a lot of room for a lot of people way up toward the tippy tippy top toward where it kind of goes like this there's room for just a few people in some really bad seats lasalle you're not even welcome in the really bad seats get out you can't be up in the tippy top we don't want you at all go home we beat you about 30 Take it. Oh, that's right. All right. At St. Joe's. Let's get another one. If we get another one on the road, it's O-N on. Now, it certainly feels like this is a place to stumble. They're a bad team. They're 0-5 in conference. And it's a terrible place to stumble. But, like, do you ever just feel in your heart that something's going to happen bad? That's what I get here. Hopefully it doesn't. I would love for us to take care of business. And I would love if we could be like, okay, on the road, the senior plays point guard. At home, the freshman plays point guard. But we don't have that. You know, if I was coaching these games out uh, on an individual basis probably what i do but let's see if the freshman can pull something off maybe please don't lose to st joe's yes terrell wise keith walker and rick mcday the the transfer another nice win on the road so we're up to 13 and 6 5 and 1 in conference fist pumping let's go dayton dayton flyers baby dayton flyers we're almost through January. 
Let's get it, boys. Probably about 12, 14 games left in this uh, in this season. Get to some postseason tournament play, see what happens. All right, so Davidson again, this time at home. You know what? Unless they bring in Steph Curry, I'm calling it. Now, they might bring in Steph Curry, so it's not a guarantee. But I think we've got this. I think we've got this. Fowler, don't blow it. Woo! Fowler with 12, 6, and 3. Keith Walker with 30 and 6. Oh, Keith Walker. Hammer, don't hurt him. Oh, my word. Keith Walker went off. Let's check out the dashboard and see what Keith Walker's doing. Oh, so Terrell Wise playing a huge, huge part this year. 11 points a game, 6.5 rebounds. Keith Walker definitely doing more scoring. Not bad on the rebounds. I wonder where the difference is there. It could be steals. No, definitely not. I don't know. Assists? Blocks? Yeah, assists and blocks are both better. Uh, and Fowler not doing much, but not running it. He's getting better at the offense, getting up into the 40s. Let's take a look at this roster here. Um, actually, let's take a look at the strategy. So, Fowler, Wise. Everybody's getting a little bit familiar with it. Let's at least bump it up to 60. I think the the more we can put into that, the better. But I don't trust it much more than 60 right now. We're about to go at UMass, who's 11 and 7. Then Duquesne at home, Fordham on the road, four and fourteen Fordham on the road. That's a kind of a must win. You, know, you don't want to call road games a must win when you're playing three freshmen in the. God, what conference are we in? The bad, the bad conference. Uh, probably like the A10 or something. To the minute, men. Home of John Calipari, home of J.P. Trevieso, home of Marcus Camby, the Minutemen, the Flyers in Massachusetts. And it's the Flyers, baby! Oh, but Andrew Wilson suffers another injury. All right, hopefully it's another super-duper lame one. Bruce Shoulder, okay, he's fine. He's fine. Don't worry about it. Maxwell's still kind of pissed off. Uh, is Wilson pissed off? No, he's good. Let's see what the guys that are playing. Like, why? Like, why is the point guard who's starting every game really dislike the coach? No, I didn't want to do that. You're doing great. Keep it up. That's what I want to do. I want to send these guys. I like. I want to blow them some kisses, right? You're good. You're doing great. Keep it up, baby. Ronnie, looking good, bud. All right, cool. All right, let's delete these emails. Let's keep it going. Keep trucking. 14 and 6, 7 and 1 in conference, baby. That's better than even I thought we would do. We're 7 and 1 in conference. Let's get a second drink for Chris to pour out. I mean, the poor dude's leaving his entire life. Uh, let's get nuts with it. I know he's out, actually probably having a pint with his friends but uh i'm having a pint right here for you chris my buddy 
Cheers. Uh, Fowler and Q right now, they're both about 20 minutes based on the roster. Uh, based on the stats. So they're both getting about 20 minutes a game. But you can see Fowler's averaging three personal fouls a game. And if you look at the depth chart, we've got Fowler set to 26. Uh, you know what? That is a good point. Let's set him to 32 and see if that keeps him around. I do worry about the fouls he's going to rack up, though, with that. But we'll see. I, I thought that I had him at 30 minutes a game. Keith Walker is a quarterfinalist, but not a real challenger. 28. <laughs> All right, yeah, he's a finalist. Cool. Duquesne coming in. <clears throat> 14 and 7, we're 14 and 6. So this is a, should be a pretty good game. The Dukes, the Duquesne Dukes. That's a cool name. The Dukes and the Flyers. Flyers all day, baby. Donald Fowler. Oh, Donald Fowler has suffered an injury. Let's hope it's one of these little BS uh, Walker injury type things. Broken hand out for 43 days. So this is extremely interesting. Not for how it turns out this season, but how it affects the transfer portal. Bill Dozer, I wish you had been here about 30 minutes ago to get me to up his minutes per game earlier. Uh, but now I don't have a choice. He's he's out. So my opportunity to you know, console him or whatever, uh, completely over with. Now let's let the AI suggest a matrix here. Get back to some sensibility over here. All right, so Fowler obviously cannot play eight minutes a game with a broken hand. All right, we're, we're going to be tightening up our roster just a little bit. We're going with an eight-man depth chart. But it's all basically players that we've brought in. So hopefully we can keep on moving. Another injury would be absolutely brutal, though. Man, another injury would be really brutal. But we're headed to Fordham. They're four and sixteen. We ought to be able to beat Fordham. Like just with our inside game, we ought to be able to send it down low and beat them up with Smiley and McDade. Smiley and McDade are actually really strong. I wonder, strategy wise, you know what we are gonna do is we're gonna favor the inside. Our inside players are much, much stronger than our guards. So you just take all these little things, like all these little percentage plays to try to like get just that much better. Add them all up, it gets significant. And that's when you take Dayton to the Sweet 16, baby. We're going. We're going. Where are you at? Headed to Fordham. Win this game. 
Let's see if we can get our inside guys to just post up a brutal game. I might go heavy inside, I swear, especially with Fowler hurt. Like, Wise, as a small forward, is our only decent guard. I don't even know if he counts. There's a win. Wise, Walker, McDade. God. Between Wise and Walker, there's just so much talent. So we're 9-1 and one in conference, guys. We're into February. We're 16-6. and six, Looking very strong in the A-10. What's up, TK Bomber? Thanks for the follow, buddy. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Just streaming some Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2022 here tonight with the Dayton Flyers. Uh, continuing over my stream from College Basketball 2021, we had North Carolina winning national championships year after year. If you want to check it out, it's still up on YouTube, but it just got to the point where like it was go undefeated or there's nothing interesting happening. Uh, so we decided to move on, and we're trying out something with Dayton Flyers, who are about an hour and a half away from where I actually live. I've been up there for a handful of their actual games. Woo! Seven-point win. Wise, Walker, and Tyrone Austin coming off the bench. The freshmen, I mean, they're all freshmen, but Tyrone Austin has not had his time to shine yet this year. Finally got it. Yeah, don't. <laughs> Bulldozer said, my bad for not being here. You're all right. I'm not worried about the risk of injury or fouls. I was... Um, like, when I saw that they were averaging equal minutes is when I should have interjected and added. Like, I wanted Fowler to be getting minutes that satisfied him so that he did not transfer. Because we don't have another great option after Q graduates. We don't have another great option at the point. Our recruiting at the point guard this year did not go great. So, we wanted to develop Fowler. As such, I wanted to give him minutes that would not make him want to transfer. And I don't think, I think I tried to set that up, but I didn't get there quick, quickly enough. You know, VCU beat us down, that's all right. Yeah, I just don't think I changed those minutes quickly enough. So I'm mildly, mildly concerned that Fowler could transfer. I'm not worried about his injury. I'm worried about him transferring. I would have rather had Mario Q as a starting point guard this year. So that part's fine. <clears throat> All right, St. Louis at home, George Mason at home. And then at Rhode Island, who's really bad. Hopefully we win these three. And that sets us up really, really good, guys. We're looking strong. The Billikens. Uh, the fighting Larry Hughes. Andrew Wilson, Terrell Wise, Keith Walker. Two freshmen and a senior. I think that was a TV show, right? Two freshmen and a senior? Two men and a baby? Something like that? <clears throat> two and a half men? Something along those lines. Relatively certain. Hey, anybody that's just joining this, just now watching, hasn't been around for the entire stream, this is the uh, Chris Appreciation Stream. Chris has got a huge life change going tomorrow, so this is my Chris's last night in the Hemisphere stream. It's in honor of him and all the stuff that he's done, uh, not only for me, for CBGM. Uh, obviously, all the GM game stuff that he does is freaking amazing. You know, he's made huge uh, like suggestions for the Draft Day Sports, pro basketball, college basketball games, all that stuff. Chris is a huge part of this community, and uh, he's he's about to do some really big stuff. So uh, this is a stream to make sure to shout out, wish him well, uh, thank him for everything that he's done so far, 
and you know thank him for everything that he's probably going to do in the future going forward so um chris appreciation stream make sure you shout it out in chat give him some fun stuff to read as he travels across the universe uh over the next few days george mason coming into dayton let's send him home Send him home ugly, McDade. Oh, all right, McDade didn't show up, but it was Walker and Wilson for the most part. George Mason. You are not welcome in Ohio. You can GTFO. At Rhode Island, at St. Bonnie, George Washington at home. All right, let's keep on marching. We're marching toward this NCAA. I feel like we've got it. Ah, I kind of feel like we got it. We're going to have to keep an eye on Fowler and when he comes back from injury. But I feel like we're on the right track for certain. In year three. With the goofy transfer portal active. Not that the Sims transfer portal is goofy. The real life transfer portal turned goofy. I'm still coming to terms with it personally. But that's what it is. That's exactly right. Bill Dozer says three cheers for Chris. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. I don't know how to, it sounds corny. This could be just coming from me, but uh, three cheers for Chris. He's awesome. It's the only reason anybody in here is actually watching me is because of Chris. So thank you very much. Dayton at Rhode Island. Oh, that's a bad loss. Rhode Island's a really, really bad team, and we just couldn't overcome that. So that's ugly. The good news is we're still ahead of the curve. The bad news is, man, that's a brutal loss. And now we got to try to bounce back on the road again against a better team in St. Bonaventure. But let's see. Nothing's impossible. The fun thing with the three cheers for Chris, he's probably out at a bar right now with his boys actually getting real life three cheers in person. So, um, you know, anything we're doing in the stream is probably secondary to <laughs> what he's actually got going on. But, no, we bring what we can. We got we got the uh, amount of appreciation that we have. We give what we can. There's only so much I can do from 800 miles away or whatever it is to wherever in the world you're from uh oh we're still we're still ranked but it's a thursday so yeah tx bomber said not going to be ranked after that game we are still technically ranked but it hasn't gone over to a new week yet so on the road against the bonnies if we pull this off maybe we keep it ah well we pulled it off keith walker with 26 points and you know what not going to worry about the ranking Keith Walker is being the man. He's being the man. He's carrying the team with his 26 as a freshman. Two games left, baby. George Washington at home. LaSalle on the road. We're 13-3, and 20-8 and eight overall. All right, let's get through the Sunday. Let's see if we kept the ranking... Or if TK Bomber is accurate in that we are dropping out like a freaking rock over a stupid loss. Yep. Unranked. TK Bomber is accurate. Warrior Boyd, what's up? Warrior Boyd said he loves the streams. Glad he caught it. Hey, I'm really glad you caught it too. I absolutely, like, my favorite part of streaming is just talking to people in chat. Like, I could sit here and talk to myself about simulation basketball games. It wouldn't make a difference to me. The only cool part about it is having people in chat to interact with and go back and forth with. So, uh, I'm really glad you caught it, and I'm really glad that you shouted it out in chat. And make sure, if you're just now joining, to shout out to Chris. Uh, this is the Chris Appreciation Stream. He's got a big life move tomorrow, and we're 
all hoping that it works out great for him and we're so thankful for everything he's done for our community so far and everything he's going to do in the future and so we're saying thanks so shout it out in chat so he can read it later like he's going to be without like good internet connection for a while so i'm just trying to give him like some boring stuff to do while he's flying or whatever 2044 you might have missed a lot you know what warrior boy yes you missed a lot if you didn't watch the uh, 2021 streams this is an imported save from college basketball 2021 so this is only actually the second stream in the second i'm um, sorry second or third season that i've run in 2022 most of this was in 2021 i started off with bellerman uh went where did i go after bellerman I went to a handful of other schools, ended up at North Carolina, played it for a while, won a bunch of championships, was just trying to go undefeated, got super bored, quit for a while. And then when 2021 came back, we went to Dayton. So that is the recap. And any time that you want, we can check. Oh, yeah, get out of here, George Washington. Terrell Wise, look at him throwing up 23 from the two position. Uh, any time that you want. Oh, is this the Missouri? You, uh, yeah, was I? Yeah, I was at Missouri. Yeah, that's right. I went from Bellarmine to Missouri to UNC. So this is the same continued save. That's accurate. And um, anytime you want to go back and see the historical records or whatever, I, I mean, I'm happy to show anybody uh, anything from the save. But uh, we went to North Carolina. I just got super bored because it felt like there was nothing to do but go undefeated, win the championship, or it, bleh, like nothing. So that's why we moved. And I'm actually having a lot of fun at Dayton as we try to learn this new transfer portal system or whatever you want to call it. Oh, yeah. I absolutely remember why I left Missouri because every one of the players that I got at Missouri had a god awful attitude. But I wonder how much worse that would be in this version of it with the transfer portal. Because, like, even at North Carolina, if you go back and look, there was a year where I had two or three guards who were all really good. And they were fighting with each other the entire year. And I refused to kick one of them off because I thought we had the chance to win the national championship. And I think that I won it. But then all those guards transferred out and it screwed me for like two or three years. And I, I just can't imagine how much worse that would be with this new transfer portal. Mikos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, a, there was a lot of real ones. There's been a lot of real ones in this save. And all that information is still stored in the almanac. We can go back and get it whenever we want. Let's see what happens when Dayton goes into LaSalle. Dayton, clearly a superior team, but trying to fight through some, uh, trying to fight through some, uh, you know, a road hostility. How about we call it that? Dayton and LaSalle. At LaSalle. Woo! Terrell Wise, Andrew Wilson, and Ronnie Smiley. Ronnie Smiley. Like, I don't know why those first two dudes were listed on there, but Ronnie Smiley was in the background like this, like feeling his freaking biceps. But I went beast on that team, baby. Ronnie Smiley went beast. That's it. All right, let's check out. Let's see if Fowler is healthy yet or how soon. 12 days for Fowler. So he's still about two weeks out. Okay. I think if we can get through the first weekend. No, wait, this is conference tournament. He might be back for NCAAs if we make it. Well, I mean, we went 15-3 and three in the A-10. Surely we make it, right? Surely we make it. I'm glad you shouted out Mike O's. Mike O's was a real one. He was a good dude. Also, I really like my boy, uh, BB, was it BB Higgins? Old Double Double Higgins, BB? Yeah, I think he'll be around. 
I think Fowler will be back for the season. B.B. Higgins was legit. Uh, we had a super-duper score at Florida a and I think. Had a lot of interesting players uh, over the course of I don't know, however many years I've been streaming. It's been super-duper fun, for sure. But again, all credit to Chris. That's the dude that keeps bringing y'all back. I run the streams. Chris brings you to the streams. That's why this is his episode, and he is the man, and we really appreciate everything he did for this community and continues to do and can, will continue to do. <laughs> Mike always played the game the right way. That's right. I think I'm in the conference. I, I, I'm in the NCAAs anyway. I'm in. Let's check. Okay, let's check. Polls and media. Let's check the bubble watch. See what we got. Somebody see us in here yet? I think I might have. <clears throat> We've got to be in one of the two lists. Right? Did I miss it? 11 seed? Oh, there we are. 41. Net 45. Right there. Alright, so that's ahead of a handful of... Um, not auto bids. Like, that's ahead of a handful of at-large bids. Which, yeah, I think you're right. I think uh, a win, Bill Dozer's right, a win in the conference tournament should be enough to virtually guarantee it. A loss would put us in that, like, mm, in that kind of spot. All right, against the Bonnies, we're 22 and 8. They're 14 and 6. I know it says University of Dayton, but it is very much a neutral court. Woo! Woo! One point. My word. And somebody got injured. All right, so that was Mario Q's three days with a sore hand, right? All right, nothing big. Nothing big. UMass on a neutral court. Let's get it, baby. Let's get it. The Flyers in the minute, man. Who's got it? Yeah, they do like close games. Not against the minute, men, though. They're going to take them to school. Take them out. Let's find McDade. Let's find Smiley. Beat him up on the inside. The Minutemen and the Flyers. Ah! Keith Walker. Keith Walker decides to go for 24. Yes, sir. All right, so I would say we're absolutely in at this point. But I don't know that we can beat VCU. I don't know that we can beat them. Um... I think we've got a good enough resume to make the tournament, but I don't know that we can beat VCU. If we can, oh, it would, it would feel so good. Dayton, VCU, Flyers, Rams, A-10 finals. Here we go. Fingers crossed. Oh, shit. I unchecked it before I send the other games. That was so stupid. Oh, 
The A-10 champions of the world, the Dayton Flyers. Oh, my word. Walker went the F off McDade for 12 points. Boom, baby. That's automatic. Automatic. You had nothing. It doesn't matter what our record was in the regular season. We took home the A-10 championship. Let's see. I want to see how cute. Look at look at Mario Q with six assists. Terrell Wise, seven assi- oh, 17 rebounds? This dude is a small forward playing shooting guard. And he had 17 rebounds in the A-10 championship game. Let's see. He had 11 against Rhode Island. 10 against George Mason. Oh, he did have 15 against Portland. But he decided to go for 17 rebounds in the championship against VCU. And the Dayton Flyers take home the A-10 championship, baby! Yes, sir. Now, the last streamer beverage was for Chris. This one's for the champs. (laughs) What's up, Beach Bear? How you doing, buddy? That rebounding game out of Wise was impressive. Beach Bear made it. Good to see you. Good to see you. We're doing stuff and things going into the NCAA tournament in our, and this is the tribute to uh, Chris episode as he's about to make his move around the galaxy or whatever. Uh, so make sure to say nice things to Chris so that he can read about it as he flies across water and stuff. Here we go, selection show. Let's see where we let's see where we land. I don't normally watch these because it's so often it's like number one seed boring ish. But let's see what happens. All right, here we go. Watch those show. All right, don't get it confused. These are the play-in games in Dayton. They do not include the Flyers necessarily. Missouri State and Albany. Farley Dickinson in Ohio. BYU, Florida. The Gators are in a play-in game. Yikes. Wake Forest in Wyoming. In East Rutherford, the number one overall seed is the Purdue Boilermakers. Oh, my word. Bill Dozer's calling seven seed. TK Bomber calls an eight seed. Warrior Bo- Warrior Boyd calls seven seed. Uh, you know what? After winning the tournament, I I'm also going seven seed. I think seven seed feels right. If we had lost earlier in that tournament, I would have gone nine. But I like the seven seed idea. I do. North Carolina, Georgia State, Temple, Alcorn, Missouri, the Tigers. All right, a little nostalgia there. Seton Hall, Fresno. De- oh! Woo! Six seed. Who had the six? Who called six? I'm thinking nobody. I Even I called a seven. 
we pulled a six seed against the Georgetown Hoyas. <clears throat> we would be looking at Temple and then North Carolina, who we already played such a close game against. All right, so the six seed Dayton Flyers. Very nice. We can take a look at the rest of this tournament. We got some Gonzaga, Washington, Duke, usual suspects, all mixed in there. Georgia, Georgia, Georgia. Mm. VCU with a four. Just taking a look at like some teams that we played. Clemson with a seven. They beat our pants off, so that's disheartening. Woo. All right, let's see what we got. The former A-10 member Temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, ah. We got ranked at the last moment after the big-time A-10 conference tournament win. Let's see how it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2022 simulation of the 2044 NCAA Championship of the World and the Dayton Flyers. A six seed looking to make some noise. A lot of freshmen, a lot of young players, a lot of first year players, but I think they've got a great chance at, at making noise, not winning it, just, you know, doing stuff and things. <clears throat> All right, here we go. First round, Georgetown. The Hoy is in the Flyers. God, this is so risky. 611 is. Mm. 611 does not give me a lot of confidence. This is very tragic. Let me check the dashboard. And Donald Fowler is healthy. So this becomes the question. Such an interesting question. Like his Mario Q's advantage is the offensive proficiencies. He's got a lot of decent abilities. He's a little bit better passer, not quite as good defensively. Fowler with the better field goal percentage. Similar three points. Q the better rebounder. Slightly better assist numbers. Fowler the much better scorer. Oh, God. I don't know. if, if Chat, if you've got ideas, please shout them out. I don't know what to do here between Fowler and Q. And, I mean, I, hmm, just joking. I, I mean, I know what to do. I just don't feel great about it.
That looks right, I think. All right, I think I think this looks right-ish. Maxwell, McDade, uh, Q. Uh, let's get Tyrone Austin these these weird ass moments. Uh, dun dun dun. No 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 no. This is something's wrong here. Bum bum bum. Point guard. You, and then you. Maybe that looks slightly better. All right. Yeah, but the thing is, it's not like it was not working without him. And we want to keep him because we're not winning the championship this year. So can we, like... Can we win the championship this year with the talent that we have? Absolutely not. Can we win the championship three or four years from now with a player like Donald Fowler at the point guard? If we have the other players around him, yes, possibly. Walker at the small forward. Uh, the power forward that I just recruited. Uh, like one more player, and as a senior group, that can win a championship. I mean, you got to keep in mind, we got Fowler, who is, I think, number 23 in the country. Now we got Quadri Taylor, number 36, who was top 10 at Indy. So we've got a spectacular power forward. We've got a spectacular small forward. How many more pieces can you put around them, can you keep, that wins you a, a, a national championship? And Nate Brown's pretty good, by the way. All right, I think we got it. I think we have it. The 6 versus the 11. Dayton Flyers, Georgetown Hoyas, NCAA Tournament, 2044. All that good stuff. Let's see what we got. Take them out, Flyers. Woo! Yes! Yes! Keith Walker with 21. Let's go back and check out that box score, baby. 91 to 80. The Flyers taking them out. Ah! Keith Walker with 21. Smiley with 19 and 6. Terrell Wise, the shooting guard, the senior, doing what needs to be done. Only 8 points, but he got 10 boards. That's where it's at, baby. Get those rebounds. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Donald Fowler, we struggled over it. You watched me think and think and try to figure it out. Donald Fowler comes out. He plays 26 minutes. He only gets 10 points, but he went three for three from behind the arc. And he got seven assists, five turnovers. Um, I will take that. I will take that performance from Donald Fowler. That's a win. We got past... The 11 seed. And, uh, you know, anything can happen from this point. We're not favored, clearly. You know, I, I accept that. We're not favored. We're probably not going to win. But at this point, we're in the second round of the NCAA tournament. This was a good year for Dayton Flyers, right? Anybody who's a Dayton Flyers fan, you get to the second round, that's a good year. After winning the A-10 tournament... Got a great class coming in. I think we got some great guys sticking around, and I think this team is on the right trajectory. If you're not shouting out to Chris yet in chat, this is Chris Appreciation Night. I'm only streaming tonight because he's leaving the hemisphere tomorrow. Please shout out your appreciation and thanks and everything else to Chris and everything else he's done for GM Games. So, here we go. Dayton and Temple in the second round. Let's see what we got. Flyers the sixth seed. 
Temple the three seed. Can we put one over on him? Put it over on him, Flyers. Let's go. God, no way. 86 to 99. Oh, no way. Oh, that's brutal. What a game. Oh, what a game. We lost in the second round. 86. Oh, my gosh. 86 to 90 against Temple. What? A game. It didn't work out for us. But that plays right into my theory that we were like a um, second round Sweet 16 type of team. And that's a lot of freshmen and first year players to get that far. We were playing a, a freshman point guard. Uh, we are playing a senior small forward out of position at shooting guard. Freshman small forward, freshman power forward, freshman center. I mean, the sky is the limit for this team going forward. I'm telling you. Yes, Bill Dozer is absolutely correct. Our offense was flying at the end of the season. That's a heartbreaking close loss. But the potential left in this team is spectacular. But. The new transfer portal pisses me off. Not that it's anything wrong with the simulation. The simulation is accurate. The way that the actual game in real life has gone pisses me off. So we're playing through the transfer portal. We're going to play all the way through when players transfer out. Because I don't think like I don't think that we can have a clear idea of who is going to be on this team next year. Until we see that transfer portal. So I'm going to sim through that. We're going to get there tonight. This is BS other tournaments. But we're going to get through and see what our roster is going to look like for next year. Because if we don't... Like, assuming we can avoid brutal, like, heartbreaking... Just rip your soul out type losses then we should be fine because we're playing a bunch of guys that played the entire year, started the entire year. Hopefully they won't be leaving. But we'll see. Tennessee over Oklahoma. Okay. Ten Look at that. North Carolina. Did you all see that? The team that we lost by one point in the preseason, North Carolina. They were in the national champion. That was the national runner up. We lost to them by one point on a neutral court with a team full of freshmen in the preseason. No, I don't intend to look at the job portal. But anything is possible. Uh, we've got a handful of people in the chat right now, and I'm always very preferential to that. So, if the chat's got ideas, when we get to the job portal, we will look at it. Period. Always do. Uh, just because it keeps things interesting, right? I got to move around. Like, I could sit at one school and turn them into something over a number of years. I mean, that could just happen. But. Went from 69 to 70. That's it.
you know, a fun thing to look at here in the in this uh, job prestige. Look at the prestige of Michigan State and compare it to the current prestige of Belmont. That's crazy. That's crazy. Oklahoma is more prestigious than Kansas, Notre Dame, NC State, Villanova, Michigan State, Michigan. I mean, I'm just stating the teams that are obviously more prestigious than Oklahoma in basketball. That's incredible. I'm not going to any of these teams. There's Nate Brown's LLI, so he qualified. Good to go there. <laughs> yeah, the the prestige and whatnot changes quite quickly as you move along. Shit, hold on. Do I have to re-sign anybody? Four one uh, player development. Are you the practice coach? Yes. Just gonna resign that guy so that I don't have to go through coach hiring. Just trying to hurry up and uh, get through the uh, transfer so we can see who it is, and then we can move on. I've already been streaming for two hours and fifteen minutes. Again, this is the. Uh, one and only Chris appreciation stream. Anybody that knows all the things that Chris has done for CBGM, for GM games, for everything else. Like, he's amazing. He runs the entire thing. Uh, he's the only reason you know who I am. So just shout out to him and tell him thanks, like, in chat so that he can read it when he's flying across the galaxy or, uh, you know, coming back and looking at it later whatever it is just shout out to chris he's awesome and uh he's the reason we're all here <clears throat> Let's see if we can get some facilities out of this board come on gentlemen Gentlemen, please, sirs, thank you. Thank you for seeing my vision. The board has seen the vision. They will be increasing the facilities. Perfect. Thank you. I'm actually going to save it right there before something stupid happens. I've never actually seen anything stupid happen. I just say that. I've seen it, seen it happen in other games. So we want to avoid that at all costs. All right. End of season. Advance. Bum, bum, bum. God, I'm so nervous about who might transfer out. This is a crazy thing. Like, you never know with this new transfer portal how stuff might go. I never thought in a million years. If y'all go watch the last stream I did, I never, never thought Francisco Ward would transfer out. And he left. And that left a gaping hole at the, small, uh, at the shooting guard. Luckily, Terrell Wise filled it this year. I don't know how well. Um... But stuff like that terrifies me. And it could happen again. So we really have no idea. We made it to the second round this year. That was cool. Hopefully we keep improving. But there's no promises. No promises at all. 
Come on, give it to me. Just show me the new season already. Here it comes. <clears throat> Here it comes. It's saving right now. Boom. Two scholarships, 256K. Cool beans. Top 20 recruiting class, baby. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. How you doing, baby? Coming along. Coming along. Ninety five K. Let's just do premium there, basic, basic, boom. Cool. That'll keep us going. Mm -mm. Hey, how you doing, baby? <laughs> Pretty sure that's commercial. I don't know the rest of the words to it, but I'm just trying to get the uh, Wolverine Studios Midwest Report. Trying to get some good stuff. Nobody leaving early. Nobody leaving early. Nobody leaving early. God, look how brutal as the team looks. Mother of God. Donald Fowler transferred out. We we designed our entire I designed my entire rotation around that dude and he transferred out. And Adonis Meyer sucks, and we knew that he would suck. <sighs> Bill Dozer, I wish you'd been here earlier to get me on that 30 minutes per game. Damn it. I don't even know who Tucker is, but Fowler was very much our point guard of the future. Tyrone Austin was a rotational guard type of guy. All right, folks, we got through one season. Um, I'm still learning the transfer portal, so that's still a work in progress. Normally, I would just stop these immediately after we got through the last season. In this version, I'm trying to get you guys through to see who transfers out so that we can get a rough idea of our uh, roster for next season. Obviously, the point guard is still absolutely flipping brutal. Shooting guard's not great. Maybe DeMond Dahl can do something. Keith Walker is a fantastic prospect. Quadri I mean, the inside is fine. On the power from small forward through center, we look like a top 10 program. Blue Blood, Kansas, Kentucky, UCLA, whatever. At point guard, we're very much JV. And that's where we're at. So we're just going to throw our strategy to the inside. Uh, see what we can do. And see how we develop from here. But um, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by tonight. Again this is the appreciation for Chris' uh, stream. His last night in the hemisphere. So he's going to be traveling tomorrow. Just wish him luck. Whether it's in chat, uh, whether it's on the YouTube video after the fact, just shoot him a message. Like he's gonna be, his, his internet's gonna be screwed up for like a, a minute. So uh, just, just shout out nice things to Chris. Like 
he's the reason that we're all here. If you're watching this video, you wouldn't be watching this video if it wasn't for him. So just say thanks. That's all I'm asking. Uh, he's a cool dude. He's passionate about sim sports. And, um, you know, he, he's the reason that we can all have so much fun with it. So thank you all for watching. I really appreciate you. Thank you all for being in chat tonight. All that good stuff. If you've got questions, comments, anything you just want to shout out, hit me on Discord, YouTube, Twitch, whatever. There's a thousand different ways to do it. Just don't transfer out Donald Fowler, you jerk. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed in you. All right. Later, y'all. I appreciate y'all watching. I'll catch you on the other side.